and verse uh, 125 as for those who have a disease in their hearts so here the Quran is making it very clear that the reason why you have these different reactions it's not because there's a problem with the Quran the message is pure but though the recipients don't have the same capacity they don't have the same attitude they don't have the same level of sincerity and purity as for those who have as for those in whose hearts is a disease the Quran doesn't increase them in faith it increases them in defilement it increases them in impurity meaning that it, it compounds their doubts now when we there are 12 verses in the Quran where Allah speaks about hearts that have contracted diseases where he speaks about diseased hearts now there there's an interesting uh, hadith from Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam where he sheds light on on the meaning of a heart that is diseased it's a it's a very beautiful hadith and the Imam alayhi salam he starts off by speaking about something that's very intuitive you know because of the heart the spiritual heart is is very ambiguous and you see the imams والسلام, when they speak about the heart in many cases they 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 use uh they reference things that are very tangible so we can understand the reality of the heart so the imam speaks about the body he begins by speaking about the body he says that the body exhibits six different conditions your body is either healthy or it's sick. The body is either alive or it's dead. And the body is either, you know, and the body is either awake or it is asleep. And then the Imam السلام, says, الروح. So the body, the physical body, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, he says, the physical body can be healthy. And it can also be sick. The physical body can be alive and it can be dead. And the physical body can be awake and it can be asleep. So these are the six different states of the physical body. And then the Imam says, الروح, The spirit, the ruh of the person also has these six states. So there, there's a type of correlation there's a type of connection so in the same way that the body can be healthy and sick and the body can be dead and alive and the body can be awake or sleeping the soul also exhibits these six states so the imam says ilmuha. the life of the spirit of the ruh is knowledge so knowledge gives life to the ruh and the death, what brings death to the spirit, to the ruh, is ignorance. So knowledge gives life to the ruh, and it and, and ignorance gives death to it. And the sickness, the disease of the soul or the heart or the ruh, you know, in, in this case, they're uh, they're synonymous. The sickness, the disease of the, the, the ruh is doubt. And what, what makes the, the spirit, the ruh, healthy and sound is yaqeen, is certainty. And the, the sleep of the ruh is heedlessness and forgetfulness of God. And the wakefulness of the ruh is the remembrance of God. Now here, when the Imam speaks about the disease of the, of the heart, of the ruh, he says that it's doubt. Now, when we speak about doubt, why is it that we have so many ahadith that condemn doubtful hearts? 
hearts that are in a state of doubt. Now, when the Imam السلام, when he says shakuha, that the sickness, the disease of the ruh or the heart is doubt, what is what what type of doubt are we talking about? Are we talking about doubt in its absolute sense, in its general sense? Or are we speaking about a very specific type of doubt? Because all of us have experienced doubt. In fact, I would argue that the only way you can achieve yaqeen is that you have to begin with doubt. The type of doubt that is condemned in the Quran, the type of doubt that the, the mushrikeen and the munafiqeen are engaging in, is a type of doubt that that comes out of arrogance you know sometimes you doubt something but that doubt is followed with a sincere desire to know the truth so you begin with doubt because you don't have sufficient evidence and you seek and you inquire and you engage in in, in rigorous investigation until you arrive at the truth so sometimes you have innocent doubt where someone really doesn't know. But you have other cases where someone is doubting and they're being skeptical, and that is a manifestation of their defiance. So the munafiqeen, they have doubt, and they're trying to make others doubt, not because they, they sincerely have not made up their minds, that they feel like there's not enough evidence, that this is a type of doubt that is coming out of arrogance and of defiance someone who lives in that state of doubt you know they say doubt is a good place to start but it's not a good place to end the problem with many people today is that people are skeptical but they don't follow they don't follow their skepticism with investigation you know it's easy to doubt it's easy to question but are you doing anything about that doubt? So it's not haram to have doubts, but it's haram to just doubt for the sake of doubting, where you're doubting from a place of arrogance, from a place of defiance. And that doubt is, is not rooted in a true desire to know the truth. Okay, um, one question. What are the uh, you described? There are uh, two types of sickness or two types of doubt that are uh, part of the sickness, or two types. Of, and one was the sincere and the rebellious. Uh, what are the Arabic words used to describe those two types of doubt? Are they the same word or are they different words? So, so the hadith from Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib doesn't go into detail about different types of doubts. What I what I meant when I said that the sickness of the uh that that doubt that the sickness of the ruh is uh, is doubt when the imam says doubt he's speaking about a very specific type of doubt and that is doubt that comes out of you know a sense of rebelliousness and defiance so uh so that it's a very specific type of doubt that is the type of doubt that uh that causes the the the, the heart to become uh, diseased you know this this arrogance and this refusal to even consider the possibility that there might be truth in this in this message so the doubt that that is not condemned in the quran in the quran and the hadith is is the doubt that 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 you naturally have you know when you're when you're trying to discover the truth you know i i think and as i said that in order to arrive at yaqeen in order to arrive at certainty you have to begin at least uh, by entertaining, you know, uh, some doubts. So that the doubt that is uh, that is a spiritual disease is a doubt that is born uh, from from arrogance, and that is the type of uh, doubt that we have to be very wary of. So asking questions and and having sincere doubts that's not Allah's not going to punish someone for having genuine doubt, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does punish those. Who are uh, who are rebellious? Who are arrogant? Who are uh, who just refuse to even uh, consider the possibility that uh, there might be truth in the message?
Okay, so even when Imam Ali's hadith, he was just using the word shuk to yeah. read it out. Yeah. So we, whenever you read in the hadith where the imams are speaking about shek in the negative uh, in negative con uh, connotations, that that is the type of doubt that they're talking about. A doubt that is that's born out of you know it could either be arrogance or even laziness. You know, someone might have doubt, and they might be sincere doubt, but if you just have doubt, and that doubt is not followed up with, with inquiry, that is also problematic. 